Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we have a double review in the form of both the DNA Design DK19 and DK21 upgrade set for the Titan Class Earthrise Scorponok. Now for those of you looking to add either of these sets here to your collection, they are currently available and in stock right now over at Shozy store and for that of course I will include links down in the description box below. In this video I shall be showing you the installation of both kits, I will be showing you the contents of each of them so you can decide as to whether or not you want both of them or just one over the other. And I also will be showing you how you can actually insert some of the components as there is some assembly required here with Scorponok which we'll get into more when we take a look at the DK21 kit. So the first kit we get is DK19. Now this comes with personally one of my favourite accessories that being finally a G1 accurate looking blaster here for Scorponok. This was an accessory that I really really wished Hasbro and Takarotomi actually packed in with the original version. You can see here that it looks absolutely fantastic. A really really beefy looking weapon. It is in fact comprised out of two components which we'll demonstrate when we get him transformed up into base form. But I think the sculpt work looks excellent, as so does the subtle highlights of silver that we have here, as well as on the outer section of the blaster. The way this inserts is very, very simple. So you can see we have a port here on the top. This will peg into this section of Scorponok's hand. So you just want to open the palm out, shoot that section in there. And there you have the blaster being holstered by our huge Titan class Scorponok. I do apologize if I'm not able to get the figure in full frame. This guy is massive and since I actually did my review of him, that review space is unfortunately not available to me anymore. So I'll try my best to show off everything in as much detail as possible. We also finally get some more awesome looking blasters. So another complaint that I had with the original Hasbro version was that he only come with a pair of blasters. He didn't come with four and it's super awesome that we're finally getting that. Now something worth noting is that you only get one pair per set. So if you want four fully articulated blasters, you will have to pick up two sets. But for those just picking up one set you will of course get the two cannons that we already get included with the figure although those ones are not articulated like these ones so you can spread the turrets out as well as hinge them up and down and they actually look very very faithful to the original Hasbro mold so here for a comparison you can see that they are very very similar as far as sculpt and paint is concerned albeit this time of course these ones are a lot more articulated so these install in the exact same way as the Hasbro versions so just snap that one on there and of course, we'll take this one, spread the cannons out, and snap that one in there as well. So he looks really, really cool with those. Once again, we'll go in for a more detailed look later on in the review. And we also do get included these silver outer leg panels. Now these look really, really cool. They've been completely painted in a very, very nice metallic silver. And these essentially do just peg on to the side here of Scorponox legs. So you can see the four ports. These are in fact going to peg into these four sections. So align these sections up appropriately snap them there into place and you can in fact actually take these pieces that we attach for the shield remove those and now actually port them here onto the side to create a really really cool look so just to bring that in here for a closer look you can see that is now the outer section of Scorponox legs I'll repeat the same process for the opposite side and just to bring him in here for a closer look you can see how that side looks. I have decided not to peg them in all the way as it does become rather difficult to remove them. But just to show you roughly how the blaster looks, you can see that's a massive looking piece. Although it does slightly restrict Scorponok's elbow bend, but for poses, I don't think it will be a problem at all. And here, of course, we've got those brand new articulated cannons. We do, of course, also get other accessories. So this one here, I believe, is a bonus accessory. This is like a transparent, clear piece of plastic, which I believe is supposed to act as an almost visor for Scorponok. And just to demonstrate, how you insert that, of course, you're going to want to pull off the head, remove the horns on either side, and then clip this here over the top, and like so on this side, port the horns back in, and there you've got the brand new visor section holstered onto Scorponok. But we will be taking a look at the head later on in the video, of course, when we get to the DK21 kit. And then the final two accessories that we get here for DK19 are these gap fillers. Now, I believe they're gap fillers. I haven't really found much of a place for them in his Scorpion or base mode. But you can see these are pretty much spot on as far as a color match is concerned. And just to demonstrate how they do install into the figure. So you want to take a look here. You can see we have this massive hollow cavity. So for this, this section is in fact going to cup around this piece and then this piece here is going to peg into that screw hole. So I would recommend pegging this section in first. So snap that in there. 
once that's installed, we can then clip that into place. And you can see how that really nicely fills that gap in. Just for a comparison, here we have a before and after. I think that looks excellent. And considering this here is on a pin joint, it will not hinder articulation at all, which is super, super cool. Now we move into DK21. Now this personally for me is my favorite out of the two kits, as this one really has the most cosmetic changes here for Scorponok, especially where the legs are concerned in Scorpion mode, the shield, as well as the visor. So to kickstart things off, we'll take a look at all of the accessories that we get included in this. So you can see we now get a brand new transparent visor, which will in fact actually allow you to see the eyes beneath Scorponox mask, something which was also a criticism I had in my original review. You can see we get a much larger shield attachment, which looks fantastic. And we also now get a second pair of cannons. So as mentioned before, if you want two sets of articulated cannons, you will have to pick up both kits. But if you decide to only pick one up, I guess you could always utilize the leftover Earthrise Scorponox cannons in order to create that quadruple look. So these install in the exact same way. However, this time I'm going to peg into the back. Now here for the shield, you are just going to want to take this claw section that we got with Scorponok. You can see two ports here and here, and these two tabs, of course, holster them. And this works exceptionally well. It looks so much cooler than what we actually got with the Hasbro version. This looks awesome. You can see that as far as the sculpt work is concerned, this definitely looks as if though it can take a lot of firepower from the Autobots or the Decepticons, depending on if you are basing it on Netflix continuity. I think the overall sculpt work blends in perfectly well and it is a much, much better looking shield. And it does holster onto the arm in the exact same way. So once again, we'll take a closer look at this actually on the figure in a full body profile later on in the video. But just to show you how this does tab in, you can see we get the two ports here at the top as well as these two holes that these sections here are going to holster into. And you can also see here, even with Scorponok laying down, it is a massive, massive piece. Then we turn to some of the major cosmetic enhancements. Now for this, you will require a screwdriver. I would recommend trying to get the most longest, skinniest screwdriver that you possibly can get. This, in my opinion, is something that DNA Design should have actually included in this set, especially for installation of the scorpion legs, as I had a really tedious time actually removing them. But before we delve into that, we'll first of all go through how to actually install the brand new visor section. So you are going to want to remove all of this here including the transparent blockade you'll then want to lift this section up and you can see a screw in there for this section however i would personally recommend just completely detaching this it is merely held on by this almost mushroom tab so just pull that clean off and you'll get a much easier access here to the screw now bringing in the all new bonus accessory, you do not necessarily have to actually re-screw this in and that was also something I mentioned in my Earthrise Scorponok review essentially. You could just holster this in here if you wish to actually switch and swap them. I personally tend to just leave the screw out as it's very easy to just remove and replace with whatever piece I so desire. So this here is a piece that I do actually leave unscrewed. Of course we're then going to want to completely reassemble Scorponok's head. And before we actually put that transparent piece back on, I just want to show you the detail that we now see with this transparent piece. So much better in my opinion when compared to the solid piece of red plastic that we got on the figure as standard. This looks awesome and you can see the detailing of the eyes a lot, lot better, even better in hand than it is actually presenting itself here on camera. Now, flipping Scorponok here over on his back, it is here where you're going to want to bring in these all new fully articulated scorpion legs. I'll be completely honest, this was the most frustrating part of the installation for me, as you have to remove four screws, which can be very tedious, and if you do not have the correct screwdriver, it's going to be near enough impossible. I did actually strip the head to one of the screws, which I was so frustrated with, but DNA Design obviously foresaw this, and they did package in four alternative screws, which I believe are actually designated for this particular segment. So, to begin with, you're going to want to remove this entire section here from the back you're then going to want to take this section pop this entire piece out and remove this and set that here off to the side you're then going to want to take the legs pull those out of the inner section of the torso and you can see here that we have four screws one two three and four these are the four that you're going to want to remove in order to actually take these back sections clean off Once those four screws are loosened to their maximum potential, you're then going to essentially want to harvest what you can from this piece. So the kit does suggest that you remove these wheels here, which are actually very difficult to pull out as you will need these for the second set that we're going to install by DNA Design. So pop this one here off as well. They are held in just by friction joints really, but it's very difficult to actually pop them out. So just like so. 
and then we can proceed to take these panels clean off. Now, you're also going to want to harvest this section here of the leg. Kit suggests that you just pop this section here clean off and you're going to want to repeat this for all eight of the legs. So we'll do a very quick time lapse and then of course we'll insert the all new articulated sections. Here we can of course bring in the brand new articulated sections and you're going to want to take all of the tiny little mandible sections of the feet that we took off earlier on and put them here on this brand new component. Here is one that I prepared earlier on and I think the colour match is pretty spot on. The one from the Hasbro version is ever so slightly more vibrant but honestly I do not think that it is that noticeable at all and once all of these are installed it is just a matter of fact of actually turning here to the underside and realising that these posts are in fact going to want to actually peg into these huge slots that we've got going on here for the back just to demonstrate how go in you just want to push that up in there extend this forwards and it will snap in really securely it's very easy to do and it's definitely very effective so just align this here up appropriately and shoot that section into place ensure that all those scorpion legs are tucked in there to the best of their ability and then of course come here to this side and repeat the exact same process slide that section in we can then bring in the wheels that we've harvested from the original section and just port them in here to the top until they clip into place and of course repeat the same process here on the opposite side. We're then going to want to bring in the brand new bag of four screws and insert them into all of the holes that we remove screws off in order to take the backpack off. You'll then want to bring back in this back region and just slide it into its brand new slots. Then we can take all of these scorpion legs once again and compress them back into this cavity of the torso. For this final part of the review, I am in fact taking a look here at Scorponok in my garden just as it's the only place that I have big enough in order to facilitate his size. Honestly, he looks fantastic here with all of these upgrade pieces. You can now see the quadruple cannons that we've got on the arms. They look fantastic, of course, with their new articulation. You can see here for the head, we've got that brand new transparent piece of plastic, as well as that really awesome red transparent visor, which you can actually see the green eyes of Scorponok peeking through. And then we now have that much bigger, much better, and now of course included awesome looking G1 orange Scorponok cannon, which really does look fantastic. We have this massive shield here on the side with some super nice paintwork. You can see some purple, silver, and the really cool gunmetal gray with that original shield attachment there at the base. And then as we spin our attention here down to the lower section, you can see those brand new gap fillers there, which I think looks so much better, especially when posing Scorponok into some of those more dynamic poses. And we also get these sections here, which I think we'll see more of in Scorpion mode than anything. And the back section that I just installed, you don't really see much of a difference here in robot mode. It is essentially exactly the same, just the color is slightly different as far as the grey is concerned, but you'll see that once again more in Scorpion mode, but definitely really, really awesome look here for Scorponok in robot mode. I'm so glad that I picked this up. There was no way that I wasn't going to considering how sought after the DNA Design Predaking set is. So definitely he does look fantastic. Transformation for Scorponok into his Scorpion mode. To be honest, there really isn't anything different at all. All you have to do is place some of the accessories in different spots. So we've got the two front cannons here on the top of the shoulders, much like you would if you had the original version. And then the other set do in fact store on the legs. You can see we now have the all new articulated Scorpion legs, which to be honest, are a little bit of a letdown. They're not as articulated as I thought they would, but on the original version, they could merely just hinge up and down. With these versions, they can spread out to the sides which is really really cool so you can hinge them left to right and then of course up and down to your own personal desire the huge orange blaster does peg into the tip of the scorpion tail which looks super awesome and then if we just spin him around here to the back and bring in the shield component in order to actually store this you're going to want to break it up into various different pieces so just untap these sections here wriggle that section off and repeat the same process. You'll then want to take this, collapse this in upon itself and ensure that you've got this side with all of the various different grooves in as this here is in fact going to store into these slots. So align this up appropriately and shoot that in there. And that is how you are just supposed to actually store this entire attachment. And then with this piece, much like on the original version, you can just take that and snap that underneath. And then finally, for these two sections, they do just fold in upon themselves. You can see various different ports and slots that will tab here onto the sides of the arms. So 
just snap that section into place and of course repeat the same process and that will be all of the DNA design upgrade pieces from both DK19 and DK21 fully installed here on Scorponok in his Scorpion mode. And to wrap up very quickly because my camera is just about to actually run out of battery, here we have Scorponok fully transformed up into the base mode with all of the attachments. So you can see the gun splits into two different components. So we get the orange section which tabs onto this leg and then the grey section which tabs onto this side. You can see the cannons here at the bottom. Just bring this one in here. You can see one cannon to store there, another one stores here, and then the other two do store in the same configuration that they did for the original base mode. And then a part of the shield does actually now form the ramp section here at the bottom. So not really many differences here as far as base configuration is concerned. For me personally, I think this set is mainly designed for robot mode. And to me, it looks absolutely fantastic. It really does complete the look of the character and makes Scorponok, which has always been ever since I've got him, my favorite Titan, probably almost a masterpiece worthy. Honestly, it rectifies near enough all of the issues that I had with the original version. And I even believe that DNA Design is coming out with a third upgrade kit for this guy to make him just that little bit taller in order to scale better with Fortress Maximus. So they are definitely doing a terrific job here with Scorponok. For those of you who want to add either of these kits to your collection, I will of course include links down in the description box below. The only area that I don't particularly like is the installation of the Scorpion legs and that's mainly down to the simple fact that I didn't have a screwdriver that was really the perfect fit. So definitely be sure to find a screwdriver which is incredibly long to actually reach some of those deeper screws. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do let me know down in the comment section below and also be sure to let me know on what you think of the upgrade set and whether or not you'll be adding both of them, one of them or none of them to your collection. I thank you all for watching and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.